Mike, we have Hercules past the transom. Copy that. Back deck, this is control van. Yeah. Go ahead, van. Made sun reflection, so if you could please continue giving position, that'd be great. Do that, tether is all the way out. Hercules is just the port of the center of A-frame. Yeah. yeah, we shouldn't be doing this, launching or into the sun. Well. Yeah, you should turn on the the powers and then enable it the last. So that the other one. Van there, Van yeah. Deck. We and still then, have Hercules just the port of the center of A frame. It's starting to straighten out. I can't see it at all. So copy. Yeah. Yeah, turn on your cameras, everything but lights. Cameras would be yeah, great. Yeah, leave those, yeah. I, I still Enabled, don't. right? There we and go. Van Deck, we have Hercules dead center of the A-frame. Copy, thank you. So there's no edge tech, you turn the sonar on, altimeter, USBL. Turn on the Paro and the SVS. And that uh, is everything. That's all you need. And then once you get in the water, turn the lights on. So record three and four? Yeah. Atalanta's in the water, Hercules is dead astern of the A-frame. This is an audio slate for dive 2012. UTC time is 19.04.45. Mark. <coughs> nav, nav, back deck, back deck is secured and gates are up. Copy, thanks. Pilot, this is video okay to hit the dive salvo? Control, control, back deck, I'll stop at five zero meters, transferring over control. Okay.
So now you got winch control. Copy. So you watch the drum there and start going down and slowish. And then you're going to look at, here's your, this is your winch speed. Okay. This read right there. Yeah. That's the speed. We're going to shoot for like 27. So I'll let you have it. And then, and the goal is to keep the delta there at zero. So. <laughs> so just look at your depth readings here. So the yellow is Herc and the blue is Argus or Atlanta. Those, those two numbers should be the same. So you're deeper than me, right? Yeah, you slow down. Yeah. Whatever it takes. And then, so I will switch over to this utility screen, and then this will eventually show us what we're doing. And I didn't hit stick lock. Sorry, I I had missed the button. But. And then once we're sort of settled in here, you can use that stick right there. And you can stick that in here. Here, I'll hold that. Yeah. And you gotta kind of fiddle with it a bit, but you can, that's actually, that's good. <laughs> yeah, well, you, you gotta kind of like fiddle with it a little bit. Oh. Hey guys, are we good to open up the web for questions? It's pretty sensitive. Oh. 1854i. And if everybody's okay with it, I'm going to open up the web for questions. Video that Salvo's not working here. Salvo's not working. Salvo's not working. I'm trying to go to dive mode. It's not working. It just took. I hit it. Uh, you want me to try again? No, I hit it. Oh. You see what you need to see? Yeah, I was going to see if my if there's something wrong with mine, but okay. Can uh, I do that? Well, if you want to hit it again, it's not going to change anything. Oh, I was going to diff. I'm trying oh. to change modes. Oh, copy. Yeah. It's not doing anything. Um, can you I don't know. go to a sample salvo or these? Yeah, I hit, I hit sample and I tried launch recovery. And you're hitting? None of them. None of them are doing anything. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'll take a look at it. We're, uh, none of them work. Magnetic deviation. 
Yeah. I'm uh, on the line, Jonathan, right. is table one. The any outie. Uh, I'll slow down a little bit here. Salvo firing. Use what? I use the touch panel. Oh. But you have dashes there. That's interesting. Um, you mean in here? No, not right now. I'm just looking at it. Because uh, normally the end was this and I'm not Ed's digging into it right now. Okay. Uh, remotely, so I'll let you uh, know. All right. Sample. Nothing. What are the what? <laughs> fairies. I'm going to say fairies. <laughs> it's okay. Yep, so I'll just highlight. <laughs> Yeah, that some bioluminescent cool. things. Uh, yeah. Should have killed the lights. What do you want, Jonathan, a four <laughs> for that? <laughs> okay. I'll speed back up. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, t I'll try and get, I'll try and get it to a steady state here. All right, Devin, can you hear me? You got an SPL? Okay. Right, good morning, everybody. Welcome to our dive. This is H2012 ROV dive plan. We are headed down 6,000. 82 feet max. Look at some calmer basalts. All right, uh, I'm settled at 25 ish. Oh. Questions are open online. Come join our party. Devin, you're a little soft. You're okay, I can do that. I didn't want to talk to everybody maybe. else. Is that better? Yep. Much better. Thank you, Barcelona. Good to have you joining us. Once we're all settled in here, Devin, should, do you think we should do a round robin and just get a feel for everyone in the room? Absolutely. Who wants to go first? Anybody want to go first with introductions? Maybe yeah. I, the, give it a minute I or really so. appreciate our audience's tolerance because yeah. we are, uh, this is the first watch for this group. Mm -hmm. So there's tons of training going on at each workstation. So folks are trying to figure out what they're supposed to be doing in their job. And I think we will 
Give it a minute. Give it a minute, and okay. we'll get into. That's fine. We can definitely. I mean, do the, that. the wide field camera array is still coming up. They're actively talking about Be settings here. All day. here. And I've got, typically we have one science communication or, or a data logger uh, to my right, and there's three, because they're there's all huddled three. together training and talking about what's coming up. So this is all really, really good. It's just it's a got a lot going on. Gotcha, yeah. Chaos. I don't mind if you, if Devin, if keep you and going. I want to oh, sure. uh, back and forth a little bit, but let everybody else keep. Well, welcome, everybody. We've got American yeah, Samoa so joining us you keep as well. Talofa. My name is Devin Jones. I am the Science Communications Fellow here aboard the Nautilus, working this shift and this dive. It's great to be with you. I'm so excited to be here. Devin, while everyone's kind of on their own channels, getting trained up and, and situated here, do you want to talk just a little bit about what this dive is and what we're looking for specifically? Absolutely. Our objective for this dive is to image the columnar basalts uh, known to be in the area. They are basaltic. We say it that way. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Lava flows that cooled to form rectangular prisms, and they're absolutely beautiful as they sit along the bottom of the ocean floor and. As they've cooled, the lava that's come through, they've cooled. They just um, make these rectangular prisms, sometimes up to 12 different sides. So we're looking to see some really cool images today using uh, Triclops, our new uh, 6K camera system that is going to be taking some really amazing photographs for us. That's right. As Jason just mentioned, this is the first official dive with Triclops, which is really exciting. We had a dive yesterday. That was a shakedown dive, so we were kind of getting a feel for the technology. Yeah, for sure. Um, this is, it's going to be really exciting. We have uh, the camera system that we have built is six, rated to 6,000 meters. Um, it's three cameras that can be uh, used together or broken apart, and we have them configured today with two of the cameras providing a 180 degree, each providing a 180 degree fisheye view. And then uh, what we describe as the cinema camera is looking down over the porch in front of Hercules. And the hope is that when we get to the bottom to this amazing geological formation that's previously been um, found by the Hawaii Undersea Research Lab, mm -hmm. uh, we'll use this camera to collect enough images to, to develop a three-dimensional model of this space and and this photogrammetry that the camera is going to be used for has been done repeatedly in um, science but what's new and unique is uh, the tools that we're using are, are come from the video game industry and so we're, we're leveraging the billions of dollars of investment into creating these cityscapes and video games by by taking pictures in Boston or New York and building that model that then you can play your, you know, um, video game through the city. We're going to do the same thing here in the deep sea. We're going to build a model. That's going to be these amazing. Am amazing geology, amazing. geologic formations. And through the course of the cruise, we hope to build our workflows so that this becomes more uh, closer to real time, right? So that a scientist ashore could almost see the model populating and make scientific decisions able to explore the seafloor themselves rather than just following the video of where our vehicle is going. And it's going to be uh, hopefully a really powerful add to the to the way we communicate what we do. It's, it's so cool to me that it, you know, we often pitch this whole concept that it takes so many different backgrounds and perspectives to pull off a cruise and to ensure the success of our work. And that just goes to show like we're making this 3D modeling based off of video game technology, yeah, right. <laughs> right? Well, I think it's exciting too because previously you'd have graduate students and PhD students putting the building these sorts of science relevant models, and now you have like at the University of Rhode Island, we have a program with community college students that are in the video game courses that are going to participate when we get back with this data, right? So we're just continuing to open up the access to. Uh, this deep ocean data by bringing in these other tools, which is which is really really cool. And that works great for me as a science teacher, getting kids involved and getting them looking into everything that the ocean has to offer, opening up a whole new world for them to 
to explore, get excited about for their future. Yeah, we did an interaction this morning, Devin, and you asked the students to, you know, show of hands who had used a, a VR headset before. Yeah. Now. Personally, I've never used one. Yeah. <laughs> so seeing that the majority of Video the Video games yeah. and kids are pretty popular, so I this works hand in hand. Yeah. Turns out, huh? <laughs> so yeah, that's really cool. I might have been too hard on my son when he was growing up playing the video <laughs> games all the time. Isn't that so funny? I know I used to give my brothers beef for it, and now it's like, that's the future of science. So yeah, it looks like according to the dive plan, we are um, expecting to dive for about four to five hours, weather permitting. And uh, our expected max depth is around 1,800, just a little over 1,800 meters. Um, I think we're gonna head down to about 1,800 meters and then begin to gradually work our way up a slope. And it sounds like those columnar basalts are at about 1,680 meters. So um, should be a, a fun adventure up to that basalt field. Probably about an hour to get us down there from, from right about now, an hour or so. And then that ascent up is going to be amazing. I'm already predicting that we're going to find incredible things. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking it into existence. It is exciting. We don't have, uh, we've got plenty of geologists on board and I, I can't wait for the swarm once we hit the bottom and see the first <laughs> formation as Dr. Ballard, yes. Dr. Mayer and Dr. Drake all, all uh, run up into the van. Devin, do you have the uh, those historic, or I say historic, those previous dive notes from the site? I, nothing that you have to kind of pull up a reference, but they are just really interesting to show. You know, here we have like a web browser based logging system where we're taking really detailed notes on everything that happens in the, on the dive. And the, the hurl report that we have here from 96 is handwritten by the pilot in the, in the submersible as he's piloting the vehicle. And so there's so Literally many- Literally handwritten, yeah, old school. There's, there's so many just unique, um, differences between the project then and the project now, and I can't wait to see the well, changes on the seafloor. Yeah, we have them pulled up right here. I don't know, Devin, do you want to take a, a read of it and see? Oh my goodness, yeah. Let's see what <laughs> I can do here. Yeah, it's, it's literally handwritten. That's so cool. But there's, I can read some of the notes here. Um, it kind of describes finding smaller outcrops of the columnar basalts at depths of 1,950 meters. We're going to kind of skip those smaller formations. And then, uh, let's see. It looks like 1,680 meters. We've got a yep. large field that is going to be very interesting to see. Yeah, collected a sediment clod at 1,697 meters, then located a large field of basalt columns at 1,680 on a steep slope. And so we've planned this dive to, to land at 1,800, and we're going to work our way. There's a, a fairly prominent canyon here, and we're going to work our way on the east side of the canyon. And this is a bit, there is a, uh, the precision in the, Latin long of this data with no depth in the information we have, we're kind of, we've got a high tolerance, I guess, for uh, exploring around, you know, there, there's no expectation that we're going to drop right onto these sites, but we'll be in the general vicinity. I'm just using my teacher skills. I'm very impressed with his note taking here. <laughs> <laughs> very precise. Love it. Do we have imagery from the 1996 dive as well? We do. That if you, uh, there's one other document in that folder, the if, and it was linked in the dive plan. If you have the digital version of the mm -hmm. dive plan, um, that's got a few photos, and maybe we can figure out how to share those with the. So if I'm understanding this correctly, we haven't not been back here to explore since 1996. That's the. The, so this site, the weather's got to be um, 
ideal. It's it's really um, affected by the trade winds, and so wow. we're lucky with a south wind that is, now we're in the lee of Molokai, and the swell that from the northwest that we were worried about is less than the forecasts, and so we've kind of just got to go for it. Yeah. And the same thing, the the other the previous team in, in 96 was here in the months of September and October, and uh, we only have a two-week expedition, so if we have a weather window to get to the site, we should take advantage of Gotta it. Got to go for it. So that also opens up that if it's good and uh, it's looking good for tomorrow, we'll probably stay here. We have an alternate plan if the weather does push us off, but we may be here for the next two days. Nice. So Herc's currently down 518 meters. Still quite a ways to go. Adam and Adeline from Tennessee. Hi, you guys. Great to have you joining us. Devin, where are you from? Tennessee. Oh, that's, yeah. that's strange. I wonder so. if I might know these guys. Huh. They say I hi, do. Mrs. Joe. I do. You do. I actually had Adam and Adeline both as students. Super excited. It looks like maybe we've settled out a bit, Devin. So if you want to go into the uh, formal program here, we can do a round robin. And, Perfect. Uh, some Anybody introductions. Anybody want to volunteer to go first? My uh, yeah, my preference is maybe we'll go workstation by workstation. So if everybody is on SPL, we'll start maybe with Devin, if this is okay with you. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Maybe we'll start with Johan, and you can give us a update on our position and uh, you know whatever is affecting the ship on the surface. Kind of this update from your position, who you are, where you came from. Roger that. Hey everyone, my name is Johan. Uh, I am a PhD student at the University of Rhode Island during the day, and today I'm here as a navigator. Currently, we're at a depth of about 550 meters. Yeah, um, and then on our way down to 1850. On the surface, we have a slight current of about 0.8 knots going from 290 degrees and very light wind kind of circling around us. So it looks like pretty great sea conditions for this dive. Um, so yeah, it should be great. We'll be at the bottom in about 50 minutes and it should be cool once we get there. I appreciate it. And Bob, what's the status of uh, Herc? Yeah, everything's looking good. Uh, we got another, uh, what was it, like about 45 minutes or something to the bottom? What do we got? 50 minutes, 50 minutes to the bottom. What's our typical descent rate? Uh, we're doing about 25 meters per minute going down. Cool. And yesterday we had a little bit of a ground fall on the surface, but that cleared up. As yeah. we to depth, anything we, today? We're at the same level we were yesterday. So yeah. vehicles are, yeah, same same condition as yesterday. Everything's looking good. Cool. So. Come on. What, what are you doing at the, who are you, and what are you doing at the Atlanta seat? Uh, I'm just here to support Herc, and, uh, yeah. Which, where are you from? I'm from the uh, Los Angeles. I'm a graduate student in mechanical engineering at the University of Southern California. Cool. And what you got? What got you interested in flying ROVs? Uh, in my community college, I did a uh, underwater ROV competition, the May ROV competition. Oh, nice. Um, and yeah, they got me here. I appreciate. It. Well, welcome. Thank you. Are you any nervous with your first dive? Is this like a... Yeah, definitely a little nervous. <laughs> 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 Trying to figure out what's going on, but excited also. <laughs> Just do what Robert says and you'll be fine, I think. Uh, Pete, hey. Hey. Could you introduce yourself and yeah. Yeah, uh, I'm Pete Thorderson. I'm uh, one of the uh, video engineers on the ship. On this expedition, I'm running as lead uh, engineer. Um, and uh, yeah, I hail from Mesa, Arizona. And uh, every expedition, you get a little butterfly going when when the ship takes off, so or the uh, herc takes off. So I think it's a natural good thing to have. Um, and uh, sitting to my left, I'm gonna uh, toss over to um, my awesome intern, 
who's uh, learning today, and it is her first dive as well. Oh, nice. Hey, uh, so my name is Manel Morangi. I'm the video engineering intern, so I'm not uh, not really at the at the wheel yet, but oh, um, just <laughs> just watching and learning today. Um, but really, really excited to be here, and also really nervous. <laughs> uh, Manel, could you describe what's going on on the satellite feeds, and and maybe how like the control that you have, you know, what the video position does for during a dive? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we're uh, pretty responsible for making sure that uh, what you see looks good. Um, so uh, the two top sat feeds, uh, sat one and sat two, are generally just going to be the ROVs. So uh, on the left, we have Zeus, who's the one on a Hercules, our main ROV, and on the right we have um, Atalanta, who is the the sled. The, the sled. Yes. Yeah, which I'm not sure what that means, but it's on. <laughs> 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 and then um, we kind of get a dealer's choice, luckily, in um, in uh, Sat three, which is in the lower left quadrant. Um, but yeah, so uh, Pete's changing it up now, so we can we can turn it on anyone in the van. Really, it's a. Uh, oh, so cool. be nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, we'll put you on camera. Right. And Manal, can we also? Uh, we're going to talk a lot about the new camera system. For sure. Do we have the ability to share the camera feed over the satellite? Is that? I believe so, but um, I think. I know this is this whole cruise is very developmental, so I, yes. I, I ask not. Uh, knowing the answer so feel free to <laughs> yeah i think jonathan can speak more to it but yes we do have the cool. um, one of the systems in the router so we will share that uh, as it becomes interesting yeah that'll yeah. be exciting when we get when we get into it yeah, you're good no worries <laughs> and then uh and then Kristen, would you then introduce yourself and what how you support the dive my name is Dr. Chris Mitchell, and I work for the Office of Naval Research, uh, supporting their uh, two largest internship programs. So I'm on board. Uh, currently, I'm doing some data log logging for the uh, dive, and I'm also working with the science communication fellows to do some outreach while we're on board here today. Um, and my internship programs are open for application right now. Applications close November 1st. So nice. have a look at uh, science uh, naval STEM interns if you're interested in a, a Navy internship at one of 50, 51 labs across the country. Nice plug. That's awesome. yeah. Actually, to apply. Yeah. That's right. I'm, filling out, I'm filling out the application myself. <laughs> yeah. Right that sounds going to open a new link over here and just yeah. get going. Uh, and then maybe I'll introduce myself. Uh, Ignacio? Oh, yeah. Did we get Ignacio? <laughs> Hello, can you hear me? Hey, we yeah. can. Yeah. Hey, uh, so my name is Ignacio. I'm a graduate student at the University of Puerto Rico, Mayaguez. Um, so my role on this expedition is um, my master thesis revolves around creating the 3D photogrammetry or 3D models uh, the data will be collecting at specific sites to detect the changes in um, the complexity of the habitats. Very excited to be on this expedition. Um, yeah, very excited to see what's ahead. So, uh, Ignacio, we, we've got the South Point Pinnacles coming up as a dive over the next couple of days. That's on the south side of the Big Island. And we have a really good video record from a previous Okeanos Explorer dive there. And so... Awesome. Ignacio's work will be potentially looking at their video. We'll follow the same track and then build 3D models and look at the changes in not only the geology but the you know everything that's that's, that's living awesome. in the that area. And so it uh, should be super super fun. Is that going to be around the same time, like 96 or 86? No, no, no. The Okeanos Explorer was here um, not too long ago. Oh, okay. Right. So this is like a modern. 1080i video like an awesome. hd video so it, it should be the quality of the model should be really really good so you can get a decent comparison should be fun and i'm really looking forward to as you get into this because you'll kind of take what you've learned here and the workflows that we've developed and you might find that like oh those guys were all screwed up like this could be done much more efficiently and i hope <laughs> i hope you share all that with us right it's gonna be great because we are that's the beauty of um kind of what we're endeavoring for is we want to use these tools that have been, this, they have this robust development behind them. We're applying them to 
ocean science and we're going to shoot and move and iterate fast to whatever is the the most efficient um, mechanism for us to get this data into the model and and to be a usable resource for folks who are following along okay so jason who's that voice over there oh me <laughs> yeah oh yeah okay. uh, uh my name is jason fay i'm uh, the expedition leader for for this trip uh, my background i was a 20-year naval officer ocean engineer and deep sea diver and uh, I was lucky enough as I retired from the Navy to join the team at the University of Rhode Island. Uh, the, in my full-time job there, uh, I'm the associate director of the Ocean Exploration Cooperative Institute, which is kind of the mechanism for NOAA to fund the Ocean Exploration Trust for expeditions like this for six months of the year, plus projects at Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution, the University of New Hampshire, uh, the University of Southern Mississippi and URI itself. And so uh, coming out on the ship is a wonderful break from the paperwork, the administration, <laughs> you know, heavy job that I have at home. So I really, really appreciate this opportunity. I think we'll get to Jonathan when he uh, comes up for air right now. after <laughs> getting focused. these cameras sorted. Uh, cool. I'll introduce myself until Jonathan's ready. Um, I am here with Devin on her first watch. I, my name is Madison Dapsevich. I'm the communications lead aboard NA-156. Um, when I'm not on the ship, I am a science journalist back at home in Montana. So uh, just like you mentioned, Jason, this is a great way to kind of uh, get to the other side of, of the science that we do. So it's fun to kind of be behind the scenes working alongside scientists um, in addition to reporting the findings and, and kind of communicating, um, you know, what it is that we do while at sea. And joining me today for her first ever cruise is Devin Jones. Yes, here I am. I could not believe that I'm finally here. It was a long time to get to October, but here we are. So my name is Devin Jones. I am your science communications fellow for this dive. I'll be with you um, throughout. And when I am not here, which I would always love to be here, this is awesome. Uh, I am a sixth grade science teacher in Clarksville, Tennessee. I teach um, Kirkwood Middle School, which is missing me, I hope, right now, but not too much. I think they're excited for you. I can, I I think can feel so the too. positive vibes. I do, too. I do, too. I got the, don't die, Miss Jones. That's, that's, well, that, that's, that's, that's love. Yeah. That's love. That's how you know you're loved. And then, Devin, as part of your job here, we field questions, right, from the web. So yes. Think, did we just turn on that, that incoming messages button? The messages are on. Feel free to go to nautilus.live, type in your question, send it to us. We will be happy to uh, answer and get you some answers so that you can feel as much a part of this mission and this dive as, as we are. What's our depth right now? What are we looking our at? Our depth right now, Herc, is currently at 830 meters. About a little less than halfway little, down. Yep, a little there. Not a lot that goes on as we descend down through the water column, but that doesn't mean that there's not a lot out there for us to see. Well, it, you say that, but we just, as we were, I don't know, it Coming was through. probably three or 400 meters. Yes. We passed through this bioluminescence layer that everyone kind of stopped. It was the the van was like buzzing <laughs> with lights. training and conversation. Then all of a sudden it was like, whoa, look at that. <laughs> and so we went through what was uh, maybe a couple of meter layer. Yeah. Of just like it looked like sparkling water. It, and it did. Was these small did. bioluminescent critters. It was beautiful. Yeah, so we often call this part of the dive the blue water, right? Because we're just surrounded by blue water, except for that bioluminescent layer. Um, we actually have a, an education resource on the website it's called Blue Water Bingo, and folks can play it at home. And it's actually really funny. It's all of these different sayings that people in the control van will often say, and folks at home can play bingo with that. So when we're saying something like, check the bubble cam, they can mark off the bingo on the, on the oh, bingo nice. card. Oh, yeah. nice. That, that would have been a good teacher activity to do yeah. yeah so we had a question come in is this team in person or are dives done 
with teams in different parts of the world? Great oh, question. I love this. I love this. Great question. So really we are here as a team, all of us located together. Um, our ROV di uh, operators are in front of us here in the van control and communication sitting right behind them. But we have a team all over the ship working together to make this happen. This collaboration could not be done without the help of everyone that's participating in their role. We do take this data and then beam it through satellite to our inner space center in Rhode Island. And then we're able to use that uh, at any time. And then we store that in, do we say Harvard? Is it Harvard? Oh, yeah. uh, that's where some of our specimens yeah. go. Yeah, yeah. And where yeah, the specimens go. So, cool. so yeah, if, we, if we're collecting samples at the time, we also have um, a wide array of scientists ashore that join us digitally. So we have sort of our core team here on the ship. And then we do have scientists all over the world who are watching the telepresence uh, stream in real time. And then also they can kind of pop into the SPL and, and there's a side chat for all of the scientists joining. So shout out to our scientists ashore as well yes. for helping to make all of these cruises and dives a success as well. Absolutely. Devin, as somebody who this is your first time aboard Nautilus, what is something that has really stuck out to you? Maybe that you, that has surprised you or that you weren't anticipating? Um, um, I would say it's not that it surprises me, but in teacher mind, I just um, makes me think of the collaboration and the cooperation part between all members. I love to make sure that students realize that collaboration is just as much a part of learning as is the book stuff because you have to learn to work with people listen even if it's out of uh, even if it's out of your comfort zone you got to be willing to give it a shot and be a part of the team look at the bigger picture Devin did we hit the uh, do we close out the the question about is everyone on the ship doing the operation we can certainly go back to it so one thing that I think uh, is wicked cool and kind of shows how OET is, is, is um, and our partners are uh, leaning forward to try to be uh, at the cutting edge of how we do these operations. Mm -hmm. um, just on this last expedition, we had a number of autonomous vehicles on board. And so one of those was from the University of Hampshire. It was called the Drix vehicle. And yes. while it was... Um, deployed off of the ship, uh, we had another AUV called Nezobot in the water. And on part of that dive, the Drix vehicle was controlled by the University of New Hampshire from the, their campus, right? We had personnel there that had the exact same displays that were talking directly to Drix through Starlink, this new low Earth orbit satellite system. Um, and so everybody on board immediately had this flash of like, oh my gosh, this is happening, right? Yeah. And so I think that perspective, if if something as complicated as the Drix, it has multi-beam sonars and tons of cameras and, and an, a diesel engine running and all these things, right? But no people. It's right. autonomous. It's, little ro it's a robot. It's not little. It's, it's a, a beautifully sleek uh, surface vessel. You can imagine that we have um, 12 hours worth of personnel on board for ROV operations, and then there could be a team ashore conducting this operation you're controlling the ROV from long distance down the road. And, and in other um, ROV-related fields, like in the oil and gas industry, that's starting to happen mm -hmm. just from the economics of how expensive it is to have people at sea. Yes. And so I think that's a really a huge growth area for us. And we're seeing glimpses in the other types of vehicles and kind of the technologies are all coming together. The Starlink is allowing this amazing throughput for getting video and getting control off the ship. So the conditions are right to start thinking about remote operations. Absolutely. So, so that's even your students from the other Tennessee. side. Your students from Tennessee could be joystick in the ROV. Uh, absolutely. You know, like, I mean, absolutely. This isn't, this isn't crazy. No, it's yeah, completely it's realistic. And again, I was probably too hard on my son for playing video games for all those years. <laughs> I probably diverted him from something skills. that was, yeah. <laughs> What's up, Jason? Great to have you here. 
And I have another question. What is the maximum time that the divers stay underwater? And I am glad you asked that question because I want to make sure that you understand that there are no divers. Um, this is an unmanned operation, all running through ROVs, our remote operated vehicles. If you like your video games and you're really good at those joysticks, do they still call them joysticks? I think so. I don't, oh, <laughs> I just dated myself big we, time. We should ask Bob, the Bob's ROV pilots trying. up there. Yeah. They're, yeah. Still, yeah. they're still joysticks. They're, they're still joysticks? <laughs> okay, great, great. Robert says they're joysticks. There we go. And <laughs> video, video game talent is a thing. It is. Yeah, it actually, is. if you're good at like dungeon games, the big thing is like situational awareness and being able to like kind of con con you know, conceptualize what's around you mm -hmm. when you can't see it. And that's, that's an important kind of thing to, to have. Yeah. And eye coordination. My younger brother was somehow like a claw master. You know, like oh. the, the claw game. Did where you, you get a lot of stuffed animals? Yes, oh it my was God. insane. It's amazing because those are rigged, right? Isn't I it know. notorious for being? Here? <laughs> he like derigged it somehow. I yeah. don't know what he did. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's so funny. So our ROV operators are controlling uh, Hercules and Atalantis from our control room that you're viewing us from now, and they are telling them what to do, which direction to go. We can even operate a claw system to collect samples if we need to. Let me double check for Barcelona that the well, so your message came maybe, through. Uh, if so they're not called claws, though. <laughs> they're so manipulators. Manipulators. Yeah. Let me go back. Yeah, Robert, do you, can you describe the, so this, the, how an input that you give to, say, the, the joystick or you control the manipulator, how does it get all the way down to Herc to, you know, actuate the manip? Yeah, so that we have sort of, well, on the craft arm, our primary arm, which is starboard manipulator. That one has a, a sort of a, think of like a little miniature model of the arm. Okay. And and you move it, you move that little model and the, the other subsea arm will mimic it. It'll follow that along the same way. It's a, what do you call it, well, the, the drawing where you can trace a drawing and it makes a bigger one? Is a pant panto line? No, like a pant pantograph? Pantograph, right? Yeah, pantograph. Cool. Yeah, and does it, it have... Like so if the arm feels resistance, do you feel it in the joystick? So we do have what they call force feedback. That's a, a, a something that's available. This has that, but we don't use it. Mm. it. It tends to throw you off, and it doesn't have a lot of practical use for what we're doing. Is that because we do more delicate kind of science sampling where that might be for more... Uh, it's it's like distracting, I think. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. All right, for those of you letting me know that the message box had that red dot, I took care of that. If you want to refresh your browser, you should be good to go. Thanks for letting me know. So we had a question, will the whole team get a chance to go down? Remember, this is an unmanned operation, so it's just the ROV. We have our pilots that are operating and controlling from the control van here. We do have uh, three watch sections that'll each stand a, about a four hour watch. So most of the personnel on board in the science party will participate in the control van. We do have a team that's processing the imagery and creating the models that's kind of working the off shift. Yes. Um, and we hope to work everybody through. But everybody in the science party will be up here in the van. You'll hear all those voices throughout the day's dive. Yes. So everybody, you'll get a chance to take a turn and come in and, and work through somehow, some way, but on the ship, not off. Yep. I almost want to reach over and flip Jonathan onto SPL so just because you he's going through okay. all these camera We're settings and you just get a sense for how complex the, the, the setup east, right? um, okay. the system and, and complex in a good way. This is like okay. the first time using going all the way to the, the, okay. this system and this will all be yeah. 
automated and configured, auto configured in the future. But we're really testing how all these settings look in the deep ocean. It's really, really hard. With the lighting scheme of Herc, um, just very difficult to replicate um, well, in the I just, lab. As long as we're not going to land on the slope, that's not, we don't want to do just that. Is a, like, it's a lot we of We want to start in a, in a benign sort of flattish area, not come down on the slope. So. Roughly 700 meters to go. I like where we are. It's just for, yeah. So we don't run into any surprises, you know. <laughs> Just to remind everybody, this dive should take anywhere between four to five hours, weather permitting. We are headed down to look at the columnar basalts. Those are ten meter divisions. These yeah. basalts have formed yeah. by contour. lava. Ten meter contours. Cold. So that's pretty steep. Quickly. That's like in there in the middle there it's like whoa that's that's a wall forms yeah. these rectangular prisms and we should be guaranteed almost to see some fabulous marine life down there yeah sitting next to jonathan is like so i feel like nasa yeah it feels like <laughs> i'm waiting for the rocket ship to just we go do. So we want to be where we have Atalanta <laughs> away from the wall with Herc out front, right? Yeah, we don't want Atalanta leading because then it's going to be into the wall. Oh. Why is the control room called the van? Uh, it's, uh, it's actually made up of three 20-foot shipping containers and i say that with the utmost respect absolutely but, because yeah. it looks fabulous so the shipping containers are amazing because they're very very rigid they're easy to pick and load and the concept for the this control van is that it could be expeditionary right we could we could have another ship or when the nautilus in the off season the these containers control vans um could be could be moved to another vessel and set up to conduct operations. We haven't done that yet with this setup, but the, from my seat in the van, you can see where they've cut the side panels mm -hmm. of the vans out and we have this um, joint between each van. And so we have three 20 foot vans um, mated together to form one large room that we're operating. And van is easier to say than container. Yeah. There you go. And I guess my van <laughs> is mobile, whereas a room maybe implies that it's stationary. Yeah, I don't know where the yeah. actual, yeah. Why we don't call it the container control or something? Control <laughs> container. <laughs> Sounds it sound like very good. Control <laughs> container. <laughs> I think it comes from like broadcast, like oh, all like the a broadcast? video people come okay. from. Oh, mobile oh, broadcast. Yeah. 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 You should oh, know that. I they live that. in vans. <laughs> yeah. Well, because Dave helped to design it, right? And he's an old yeah. broadcast guy. Yeah. There so you that go. makes a lot of sense. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like this, the Chris Farley, like, in a van down by the river is like this van. <laughs> <laughs> a van on the top deck of Nautilus. <laughs> That's a great one. <laughs> the other term for broadcast mobile productions are trucks. So oh. we could have okay. just called it a truck. See all the options. We had so many options. <laughs> when I was working in broadcast, we had a control Jeep because everything was so mobile at that point. We didn't need all of the like heavy equipment. <laughs> all right, so 600 meters to go. Getting there. Uh, Johan, if you're on uh, SBL, maybe, what do we expect at the bottom? Like flat, slope, if you have a, uh, and kind of what are the screens you're looking at? Howard, how do you know what you're to expect? Yeah, um, so in front of me, I have uh, some bathymetry data from one of the previous cruises that came here. And at this time, we're planning on landing Hurricane Atalanta right in a more flattish area on the edge of a slope. Uh, once we get there, uh, we plan on kind of doing our checks and getting everything ready and then we'll move towards the slope and from there the science team will kind of direct on whether we want to go up and above here or travel down south along the slope to uh, find an area with 
the, the basalt features that we're looking for. Those yeah, I appreciate it. That's great. Mark. Thank you. Yeah. Devin, when you're teaching back at home, do you often use um, some of the education resources as well with your students? I use as much as I possibly can. What Being in Tennessee, one of the things that I have a passion for is making sure that my students understand that there is something greater out there than just what's locally around us. And a lot of, uh, a lot of times people don't have the exposure to the ocean. So when it's out of sight, it's out of mind. So what I love to do is to bring the ocean in and teach um, my science content from that and just try to help make those connections so that they're aware that it's out there and it gives them the opportunity to see things um, and explore that they didn't even know existed. And then hopefully they get captivated by that and then find a, a passion and an interest for it and then take that with them on a lifelong journey of learning. Yeah, That's what I love. The next gen of explorers. That's right. That's right. Um, yeah, and for those uh, parents and guardians and teachers and educators back at home, we have a, a tab at the nautiluslive.org website uh, for all of the education resources. So you can, um, just like Devin does, you can download that content and help get your students and your, your kids out to the deep sea kind of in that own, you know, unique perspective and yeah. learning ways. Nautiluslive.org, look for the education tab at the right-hand top side, and then you can click in there. There's lesson plans, there's activities, there's all kinds of connections in there for all grade levels, K through 12 and, and beyond. Great resource. And the kids love it. They love it. They love to get online and, uh, and explore, especially just through the YouTube channel and uh, all of the past highlight reels. Lots to see. Kristen, it's your first time aboard Nautilus, right? Ignacio? Oh. Ignacio. Oh, no, uh, yeah, sorry about that. I'm still trying to get used to this um, headset. Uh, yeah, it's my first time on the Nautilus. Very exciting for it. Hopefully not the last, though, right? No, it won't we'll be We'll keep a good thing side. going. No. Yeah. <laughs> as long as I make the right impressions and, you know, act, be on my best behavior and not eat all, eat all the food at the buffet. <laughs> I think I'll be all good. Can we talk about the food? <laughs> yeah, oh my the gosh. Food, the food is delicious, and I kind of don't even want to go home because then I have to start cooking my own food. I'm eating better here than I do at home. Sorry, Ma. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely not losing any weight being on here, that's for sure. <laughs> Just the stairs. The stairs, though, I feel like I, I, it, the stairs help balance everything out. <laughs> getting, getting up and down the ship. And I have a top bunk, so that's that's interesting oh, as that, well. I feel that, like I exercise getting in and out of my bunk. I'm also top bunk, and it's like a whole gymnastics yeah. affair yeah. to get in and out. Yeah. And my roommate's over there laughing because yeah. <laughs> you experience yeah. it If you time. could yeah. see me so getting see out the in night vision, the other vehicles, right? night vision would be the <laughs> ultimate. I could probably win some money yeah. with So this the is 10 meters per division on the Hercorn, and that's 20. Yeah, I think what's also hysterical yeah. is like um, everybody oh, in your room being the like, top of the conscious about the not waking somebody yeah. up. It's just yep. the funniest thing ever. But it's like you're going to wake everybody up anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The quieter I am, the louder it is. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and Chris, that's the mouse cursor. Not your the... first time on Nautilus, right? <laughs> this is my first time on Nautilus, and it's been amazing so far. It's only been a few days. <laughs> yeah. But you've, you've sailed on other ships before. I what? have sailed on other ships. I sailed with Sea Education Association twice on the Robert C. Siemens. Um, for six weeks each time, once in tw 2003, and then again in 2012. Very so, cool. Lots yeah. of different experiences, I bet, yeah. then. How does the food compare on other ships? Um, trick question. Yeah, it is a trick question. <laughs> the, the food is always good on a ship, is the answer. <laughs> Especially when you're not the one cooking. That's the truth, yeah. <laughs> That's the best feature. <laughs> the food? The 
not having to cook oh. it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, isn't that such a funny adjustment going back home? Because you're like, you just spent weeks at sea not really doing chores. Like, I have to go home and start shoveling my, my sidewalk when I get back. <laughs> <laughs> the first vessel I ever went on, I pretty much threw a hissy fit when I got home because <laughs> I had to cook for myself. <laughs> Got a great question here. As teachers, being on the Nautilus for the first time, how do you think or do you feel that this experience will forever affect the way that you teach? Absolutely. How can it not? Um, one of the things that I'm so excited about is to be able to share with students all of the opportunity paths career-wise that they can take just to be able to be on a vessel such as this. Um, the experience level is from beginner to retired and beyond. It, there's really truly no end with, um, we even have a high school student on board right now who is an intern. So the option and availability for anyone out there to experience this uh, and to be, you don't have to have a specific degree. Sorry, I, what, what are you on? What am I on? I know, but what are you? Okay, yeah, so, yeah. jack your volume here. You so lots of opportunities. So I'm excited to be able to share that with students to just let them know, you know, you can have a degree in mathematics, you can you can be an engineer, you can do all of those things and beyond um, and still find a place on this ship. Um, and I want to be able to share that and just let them know that that way they're they're excited about moving forward. And of course, I'm going to always connect how I teach with my love and passion of the ocean. So anything I can be doing. I'm On the way here, I'm, we just got finished teaching windward, leeward sides of the mountain. So I've been picture taking like crazy. I have like, I think 7,000 photos at this point. Literally. 7,000 photos of this exact cruise? Like literally, no. <laughs> like, yeah. So I looked at the number this morning and I was like, I don't know how I'm gonna ever go through all of these, but I'm going to certainly have them and keep them. But so I'm always, I'll be always, be able to connect, you know, I'll take those pictures from this image, from this trip and um, apply that to my learning and say, hey, not only can I show you what the windward and leeward side of the mountains look like, but I was there actually doing it during this time. So it's definitely an experience that will, will carry me on throughout the rest of my teaching career. And then my grandkids, bless their hearts, they're going to have to hear me their whole lives. They're lucky yeah. for that. I, I hope so. <laughs> How does severe weather impact the dive and the cruise ship? Another great, you guys have great questions today. Um, we have to be very mindful. Uh, we have someone that- Is there a weather question? I want a weather question. Who's oh. got a weather question? Whoa. Who's got a weather answer? Uh, How does the weather impact the dive and the crew on the ship? Yeah, so uh, Johan and the navigators may be able to speak to the specific effect of weather on the ship when we're diving the vehicle, but the overall goal is to look at the weather a few days out and s pick our dive locations. So planning. That, yeah, so that All we about can the planning. be in a workable spot. Now, sometimes when you're going out to a very remote location and you got to deal with what Mother Nature has dealt you. Uh, and we actually had a bit of that today. There was a northwest swell that was predicted to have uh, probably double the seas that we're seeing now. We, we you know, it's beautiful here today. Yeah. But the forecast, we're, we were expecting um, the swell in this area is notorious for being difficult to work. And we woke up this morning on site, and it was just perfect. So we it really, was. really have to maximize uh, today's dive. And, and we've all got the kind of seed plan in the back of our mind that if the weather does come up through the course of the dive, we have another plan uh, to go to. But then, Johan, I don't know if you could talk to the planning you do when you're looking at winds and currents and swell direction for dive planning specifically? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so once we are on site, we're obviously still uh, paying a lot of attention to uh, particularly wind speed and the current. 
Um, and that plays a huge role in deploying and recovering because we obviously want to make sure that Herc and Agalanta get off the boat safe. Um, so we have to pay attention and position the boat in a way that will, once Herc is off and in the water, the currents of the wind will carry uh, it away from the ship rather than bringing it back towards the ship where things could get a little more complicated. And then once it's in the water, um, currents vary with depth. And so we have to always monitor currents and winds and make sure that the current differential between where Herc is in the water and the ship is on the surface doesn't pull us too far apart or bring us too close together or make anything too dif difficult there. Thank you. A lot of pre-planning that goes into it. It's really important to understand and, and to know your weather and what you're what you're working into because it really does dictate um, how much we're able to do and get done. Uh, I have a great question for my ROV operators. You can tell me from your experiences and tell us about um, Hercules. Can you tell us, can you share how the ROV tolerates the water if it is rough at sea? How it tolerates the water? You mean yeah. the, the sea conditions? Yeah, well, we know that the yellow foam, can you talk about the yellow foam that's on Herc that try to, that neutral buoyancy there, how it's tethered? Oh, you went the whole nine yards. I went the whole <laughs> nine yards. Yeah, we've got a few hours. Uh, we don't. Well. <laughs> we have... 14 minutes. <laughs> oh, okay. So we'll give us the quick version. We know currents definitely play a role in um, the movement. Yeah, particularly on uh, launch and, re and definitely recovery. So the weather on the recovery is what we mostly worry about. Like, that's... Oh, sorry. There's two conversations going on here, so... <laughs> Uh, that, that you can't hear. You don't hear the other conversation. But anyway, that's uh, that's a big factor in how we make weather decisions is the safety. Our mission goals are safety of the people, safety of the equipment, and then the mission. But uh, well, uh, sorry. Again, I got two conversations going on here. That's I'll, okay. I'll quit force talking you. How's that? You hear yep. me? We can. Okay. There you go. Uh, where was I there? So, Bob, I think the one thing was maybe how swell affects the ship in, at Atlanta and how Herc's isolated from that ship movement. Yeah, I guess we can start with the ship movement. So the ship has limitations on what it can stand with the wind and the current. It has to hold position over the top of the site and not drift away. So... It has a weather window that it can only tolerate so much wind and, and seas. And and that also depends on whether those are coming opposing or coming together. And uh, so that's a big factor uh, as far as <coughs> the heave of the ship. So how big the waves are that the, we have a steel cable that goes right down to the vehicles. And as it's attached to the rear of the ship on an A-frame. And as the ship heaves up and down, that's translated down the cable and it causes the vehicles to go up and down with it. And then uh, there's tension limits on the cable. So we, we have a window of how much swell we can deal with there. Uh, if it's heaving too much, it's also, you're working in an area where you're close to a cliff or whatever, and like we are today. Uh, we can't have the ship go on a walkabout and drag us into the cliff. Yeah, yeah. So that's a big deal. Uh, if you're heaving up and down, and that's you know that's meters of change in depth, and you're working close to the bottom, you know you can. That's all those things kind of have to be thought of when you're looking at what your weather window is and and how the conditions are going to affect the dive. So at Atlanta is directly below the stern of the ship. Yeah. But how, how, what's the 
radius that Herc can. So we have, so yeah, Atalantis attached directly to the steel cable. So it basically hangs straight down off of the stern of the ship. And it's sort of rigid. It goes up and down with the ship. And, um, and then off of Atalanta is a neutrally buoyant tether that's uh, about 32 meters long. Okay. That goes to Hercules. So you can imagine you have, you know, uh, sort of double that as your, your work circle. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Did that, did that answer the question, or do we need more info there? Oh, for sure. Yeah, thank you so much. Definitely, thank you. Where can we find resources for getting experience on board as students? Please go to nautiluslive.org. Uh, there are plenty of places to explore um, through that website. And then um, the opportunities. Right now, I know we have the Nautilus patch for the next mission coming we do. through. Yeah, we, do. we need we need submissions for those people that are interested in um, drawing, designing their the, the next patch for the next mission. So we'll have to get some information. Well, the information is online. Nautilus.org. That's right. And then we also have an entire tab that describes our internships and fellowship opportunities, um, which I believe are open currently. Um, and that's at nautiluslive.org as well. I think you can go, uh, let's see, where? This will be the 2024. Yep, yeah, so if you go to nautiluslive.org and then you look at that top header, there's join all the way at the right and you click on that and there are several different opportunities. So we have opportunities for scientists, um, for educators, which is our science communication fellowship. And then we have another one um, for students and those are our science and engineering internship programs that also um, offer at sea experience for community college, undergraduate and graduate students. So we have a couple of interns um, here on board, which is very exciting. And it's really cool to kind of see that next generation of exploration and explorers coming aboard. Yeah, big thank you to the Office of Naval Research that sponsors a um, majority of the yeah. intern program. Just huge, huge thank you for the support there. Absolutely, and Kristen, you, you all have a, another internship opportunity opening up on your kind of end of the ocean spectrum, right? That's right. We have the science and engineering apprenticeship program for high school students. That nice. It's across about 38 sites uh, for students in high school, and that covers all of the STEM, um, any STEM, any STEM type of uh, research interests that you might have. Um, what could a what would the internship look like? Like you'd be at. Uh, so you'd be okay. at a like, naval laboratory or a, another site, the facility. Is this like top secret? It is not top secret. <laughs> However, if you're over 18, you may get a, a security clearance. What? Um, so cool. for the high school students, they don't normally get a clearance, but um, the, the undergraduate and graduate, graduate students normally do. Um, and they would all be working on uh, STEM projects with a mentor at a site. There are 51 sites that uh, the uh, undergrad and graduate students can choose from. And it's really, you can do everything from marine science to engineering to, uh, we have medical things and basically wow. anything you can think of. Uh, there is probably somewhere you could find to work with the Navy. So it's, it's definitely good to uh, check out and the application closes at midnight on November 1st. So if you would like to it's apply, right up. it That's sure right. is. You have yeah. a couple weeks left, and usually the last week is when we get most of the applications. Stop. So you're not you're not behind <laughs> yet. <laughs> That's how I often submit applications too. Yeah. <laughs> and in your role, you're you have a really interesting role on ship too, right? You're kind of this this crossover between the science team. And yet you're also a communicator, and uh, we're all communicators, of course, but um, you're a little bit more entrenched in the communication side. Yeah, that's right. So I do a lot of outreach for the internship programs, and we're always looking for great students to to work with the Navy. And so working, talking with students and, and making sure that the coordinators know how to find them, that's kind of my role. 
and helping them to to bring them on board and get them into internship programs wherever they're most well suited. So communication is a big part of that, <laughs> all the way across the board. Sorry, speaking of communication, we're getting near the bottom here, so we need to go into our focus, approach the bottom mode and keep down the chat. 10-4. <laughs> I just got it. We're getting close, seventeen hundred meters. Our goal is somewhere around eighteen fifty. So we'll start to get some indications of the bottom with the DVL that's on Hercules. And so you'll hear the pilots discussing uh, the seeing something on the DVL and then the number of beams that are uh, hitting the acoustic beams that are hitting the seafloor. And so I imagine we're getting close. The anticipation. I'm so excited. Yeah, Dr. Ballard's been in twice already. I think he's chomping at the bit to, uh, yes. to see the bottom. Yes. And, uh, I was with him astrology. yesterday when he chimed in. Uh, we were sitting down in the lounge and he was just, hey, go back to that. That was, that yeah, was, yeah. that would cracked me up. He's just like, I'm still, I'm watching you. <laughs> <laughs> there, as an expedition leader, there's always this voice running in your head what would dr ballard do what like, would dr okay, ballard okay, this do this is good and so what would dr ballard do the one thing that's always stuck with me is uh he's coached us to dive like it's the last dive that the vehicle yeah. could have a problem and you won't be able to get back in the water so yeah. just kind of leave it all in the field um mentality a little bit and that's not to push to take risks but just to to appreciate how rare these opportunities are and that you know, something like making it, getting back on deck for a meal or, you know, something that, that we could work through because it's so rare um, is important to consider, so. Kristen, are the undergrad internships paid or unpaid? <laughs> Pause that. <laughs> Sorry, can we not have chat right now? We're doing a bottom approach. Sure. Uh, focus. All right, so Ops always takes over for SBL over to the pilots and nav to get us settled. Johan, you're awful soft. You want to move that mic, maybe? attention to everything. Yeah. yeah. The Doppler wasn't on. We were focused just on the Doppler. And then it's like, we're yeah. Kind of like, I mean, it's, and we have pretty steep terrain here, so we want to, you know. Yeah. Don't, don't believe everything you see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Trust but verify. Especially, you know, it's hard terrain. <laughs> Starting to get a few beams. Yeah. Yeah, lose the stick.
Okay, you want to go to Auto Head on yep. uh, Atlanta? Yeah, just Auto Head. Yeah. Now it's there. So now it's on your, on your GUI? Yeah, up, up. <laughs> Down. The big buttons go right. The middle, right there, hit that. What happened? Just do a quick auto center on ship and zoom in for it. There we go. So those are 10 meter boxes now. I think it's Great. Okay. So do you do another DVL reset uh, when on bottom? Yeah, if you see that, once we fade in a position and we're collecting a bunch of points, if we're if it's vastly off, but honestly, it's probably not going to be too different. Um, okay. We I mean, were getting good beams, and the U.S. bill is pretty bang on. Um, sometimes the U.S. bill is even being piled of points when we're in super deep, or with a shittier U.S. bill. Mm -hmm. Does bottom type play a role? In um, definitely, like, if it's, like, if you're in a canyon or something, things are echoing around. Okay. Should be getting bottom any second here. Starting to get reflection when you got bottom. Mm -hmm. So you go ahead and walk bottom. All right, Uman, you want to, uh, yeah, stop. Stop on the winch. And now uh, I'm going to bring your heading around so that you're looking at me. So use your. See your degree buttons on the side of your auto head? There, let me go to the page. I'll show you. These, right? That's how you change your heading. Okay, you always leave auto head on. Oh, I got it good. Okay, so you want to spin around so that you're pointed at me. So you're looking at the nav screen over there, right? So you're, the long line is your dead ahead, right? So you want that to point at me. And you want to minimize the amount of wraps you have. So. You're the pink one. You should go, yeah, counterclockwise. Yeah. So that'll show you the goal. Yeah. So the little dot there. Yeah, that shows you the goal. So you're moving the goal. So go ahead and yeah, keep stepping that around until you're pointed at me. And then that's me. Yeah. That's my heading. So you're going by the nav screen, all right? You're looking at the relative. Not you're not necessarily matching my heading. You're pointing at me with the oh, you're, I you're, see. yeah yeah yeah. Okay. yeah. Uh, the all right, and then you're now you're looking up here, and you need the tilt down to the see me so the tilt down is over here this tilt down tilt up that's pointing the camera hold it down there i am the goal is to keep me in view so we use the combination of the heading and the tilt of the camera to keep me in view yeah. Zooming in, yeah, yeah. yeah. gotcha. Your delta, this number, yep. make that 17. That's your 
basic number? Set, that's okay. Set, that's okay. It's just the Roger. And uh, I don't even think you need to do it though. Like, if you look at where the positions are coming in, where it is, I think you're fine. Okay. Um, kind of check out. Sorry, folks, the uh, camera's going to go dark for about 10 seconds while we do uh, auto white balance. We are complete with auto white balance. Thank you. Are we good? Yes, sir. Okay, okay you want to zoom back out? Um, do you usually measure from the back of the ship? From Agalan? Okay. Fish eyes looking better. Supposedly that button, this is the mode. It's modey. All right, we're all set. Good to Pilots go. Are set. Great. Um, so yeah, maybe zoom out a little bit on your screen there, and then uh, let's. Sure. Let's see the track that we had planned. So the track is pretty much uh, projected to just take us along this steeper cliff face. Yep. Uh, so that I was running a craft, the manipulator of this thing, it's always grounded. So, but the ground fault detector, I turned it off. But the ground fault. And how about the the target on the sonar? So is that good? So, and that okay. that level of ground fault, we can Is that in the direction just, we anticipated? Had a problem with the arm. So, yeah. So we're good. But I thank you for catching uh, that. Roger. Yeah. yeah. Hercules is facing That is east. the kind of thing to look for. As yeah. well as Atalanta. That's where we expect the cliff.
Yeah, so let's, I, I think we head up slope. Okay, so what do I got for uh, Barry? Okay, I would say you're ready. I'm Real, ready, yeah. Make a move towards the slope. Yeah, what's my bearing? Towards waypoint one. Bridge, this is now. Can you make a move of zero nine zero meters at uh, bearing one and zero five? Zero point two, please. Eighteen sixty two. <laughs> Don't worry, Dan. There's a wall right there. <laughs> that is unfair. No, you can you, whenever you want. It's up to you. So there's been previous you observations get, deeper. You can come back in a few. I can get you to the cliff. Whatever Here, you do. and a number of them uh, shallower that we okay. planned our dive around. So we are in the right spot. you got going on here. You guys doing your watches different? What's that? You doing your watches different? Well, I'm rock starring.
So we're in the right spot. We are uh, shifting pilots here quickly. Uh, Huban's getting oriented on at Atlanta as we now gotten to the bottom and the particulars of how at Atlanta is positioned uh, in relationship to Hercules. So that's getting sorted out. We've got the camera team here with command line screens and ones and zeros all over the place. So this they're they're deep in in the guts of the cameras trying to get them ready for for this, which is awesome. So we'll be on our way here momentarily. It's going to be a grand reveal. Um. Super wall, not so much. Fantastic. A little fun. What's that? Uh, give me a second here to uh, see what Robert Scott dialed. Boom. There it is. Hmm. Are you, uh, Hey, look, a rock. I was hoping that wasn't the grand reveal. <laughs> this isn't the big event. Don't, <laughs> don't, don't worry about it. It's like, oh, oh. But, <laughs> so we're doing a lot of uh, development, and the, the folks who are helping out with data processing are new to the software. So a small, bite-size element like this to model is, is actually yeah, really Perfect useful. Perfect for targeting. Looks like we've got some friends that are kind of more on this. Okay. living just fine on that. Yeah, it looks like we have um, a crinoid, a yellow crinoid there. That is a uh, coral. I can't tell so which type. Possibly a bamboo yeah. coral. Okay. We would need to get closer. Get but yeah, we have a couple of different coral species here on this rock. Uh, potentially some sponges. Yeah, it looks like we have a, a ferraid sponge with a, the yellow crinoid on top. Uh, some anemones as well, so not too bad for a first landing spot. No, not at all. Okay. 100% joy gain, that's why I'm being so herky-jerky. <laughs> Cinema cam looks good. It's the. Thank you for joining us, Austria. How exciting! That's the workout alarm. Uh, hey, Jonathan, are you there? Yeah, he's here. He's just, uh... Are you listening? Yep, I got him. Go ahead. Can you move the, um, in OBS, can you move the uh, stereo camera windows to the bottom of the screen, please? Oh, yeah, yeah sure. Thank you. That appeals to my sense of symmetry, and I'll be able to get some better. Yeah, that's better. And we're good here, uh, Dan, Nav. We can move yeah, on. Um, while I'm playing around with the rock, the ship is yeah, yeah. still moving. we got 45 meters left on this move. <laughs> moving at the blazing speed of 10 meters. Oh, uh, that's the wrong minute. one. Sorry. There you go. Which one's 212? That's 212. You're on 212 now. Oh, yeah. I want to go to the gallery. Sure. Yeah. Bridge. This is Nav. Gallery. Gallery. 
file. Can you increase speed to 0 0.3 knots? I'm going to reformat, see what happens. Okay. Thank you. They're going to reboot the camera, okay? Okay. What's it uh, set at now? Yeah, let me see. You can see them in the cinema cam, the, almost the model building, you know, using the footage from these two. You can imagine it'd be a nice little just test. Yeah, they can both be uh, one. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you're watching from the quad camera, you got a great view of what Hercules is down there doing, what it looks like at Atlantis. Okay, that was a cool rock. Uh, Atlantis <laughs> trying to run over Herc, so I'm going to turn and burn. Yeah, let's uh, let's book it to some features if we can, please. Uh, just to bring you up to date there, Jonathan, uh, the ship is moving. And if you look at the uh, Mesotech on the left-hand side, that's Atlanta, so we're still 20, 40, 60, 80, 90 meters away from features, and it's moving the whole time. So if you look at the nav screen, uh, I'm usually the real nav screen, the ROV nav screen. I'm usually uh, about 20 you meters out. think I'm locking the session with those two? And he's not listening. In front of Atlanta, which gives us a little time to uh, stop and smell the flowers. Yeah, fishy. I saw the shadow. So SPL might be a little quiet for the viewers at home, but there is a lot of activity in the van. I mean, the Johan's a new navigator, and Rennie's here training. Robert Waters, who is just a Herc pilot, is working with Human on at Atlanta camera views and some logging, uh, keeping position. We've got three folks in the data logger science position back here with me. So there's part of the the mission of the ship is the this training and developing the core of exploration and so it's actively happening in the van as we speak much communication needed to get things flowing so yeah right and the while all the that's happening that's is right. uh, the ship is moving and Atlanta is moving and her continues to creep ahead Keep those questions coming in, and I will be happy to answer them and get you some information as soon as we have a chance to open up the line. What's the question coming in? Oh, Dan, you're a little soft. If that, if you've got a, am I soft? That would be uh, that's better. You got to kind of tickle yeah, that. Yeah, I got to rub it up against my. We had some questions for Kristen about the internship. We'll get back to those. I won't forget to come back to those. You're getting uh, lost. <laughs> yeah, she's she's going to be booked up here. She's going to have lots of uh, applications to go through. That's great. Maybe we can uh, cross post something on the socials for the O and R internship. Absolutely. I don't know if Maddie's listening, but that would be great. And maybe that'll help folks find it. This, uh, we affectionately call this uh, creature the oh. headless chicken. There we go. I'm hearing headless chicken. I don't know why we call a it headless, headless chicken. chicken? <laughs> yeah, also known as a nitmiastes. Uh, but yeah, headless chicken monster oh, is easier beautiful. to say. Look at how graceful. It's definitely not a monster, right? It is beautiful. <laughs> 
You're going to yeah. hear all kinds of cuteness from me. I won't ever find anything that's not adorable. Yeah, uh, you can take grabs of this too because this is really stunning. Oh, there we go. Okay. Uh, yeah, cap hurt. Yeah. Yeah, you can click it and it'll just take pictures. Yeah. What did we say this was? Oh, an Aniptyaceae sea cucumber. Oh, a sea also cucumber. Also known as a headless chicken monster. <laughs> How is, everything seems to have this Halloween theme. <laughs> like we see, you see something spooky and everything now because we're just near the. The deep sea also knows it's Halloween time. Yeah. <laughs> the ancient video yeah, temporarily. Is about over. Atalanta will probably swing another 10 meters. Um, would you like us to step again, maybe another 20 meters or so towards the cliff face? So uh, we're slowly making our way. We've got uh, two sonars that are available, yeah. one on uh, Herc and one on Atlanta. And we're seeing a target which is representative of like the, the vertical uh, yeah. hard rock that we're hoping to find. And so we're making our way that way. It, it requires a move of the ship. Sorry, my mistake. Can you hear uh, me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Sorry, Move of the ship, and then uh, it, nothing happens fast in the in this business, and so we're just creeping our way there. Dave, go for Dave. Can you turn Jason down to me a little? He's blowing my eardrums out. That Navy it's voice of his. Uh, we'll have to figure out where he is. He's in the science. He's in science. Right. Uh, right. Yes. Yeah. Um. There you go. So, uh, as we're swinging in here, I don't mind waiting for a minute, Elon, because it gives us less of a layback to try and work out. So we're 20, 40-ish meters, 50 meters away. Copy um, that. So Pete sent me a text. He was concerned and about we're probably temperatures. Gonna, we might swing in 20 meters, so you could maybe do a 20 meter move. Does that sound right, Randy? Yeah. Yeah. What's that? Probably got another five or ten-ish left this week. Yeah, Raj. So uh, conservative is all right. It's 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 okay to wait. Until the swinging is done. Okay. And uh, all right, I'll let him take that. That's the over. safe way to do it, so you don't have to try and mess with it. And then we know where it's going to wind up, and then we can do a move based on that. The 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 gotcha if we do it the other way. Um, okay. Is, that sounds uh, great. We get too close, and we have to step back. Roger. So you see how Adelaide. Johan, on the on the left hand sonar, the meso is that mesotech? Um, what are the range? Watch your rings? speed there when you're making those adjustments. Let's keep it to uh, like 20 meters a minute there. Yeah, if you come up fast, it pulls on me, and that that's good there on the on the duck. Yeah, yeah. And if you can, just uh, I'll probably bark at you. I'll say up five or up ten. I'll probably say something to you when I want you to move the winch, like up five or up ten. And uh, but if you're doing it, um, can you just say hey Nav? Just for the start, just say coming up. Johan, Nav. Just let me know. Uh, yes. Just say something. Do so you know, know what are the range, range rings on the mesotech? Want you to move it for some reason. Sorry, repeat. What are the range rings on the sonar? Are they 20 meters? Um, on the left for the Atalanta, it is 20 meters. On the right, it is 10 meters for Herc. Okay, thank you. Roger. Uh, you can zoom in on the tripod there if you want, Dave, while we're waiting. 
Uh, who's over there, Pete? Now yeah, you good. can zoom in on the tripod fish there. Copy that. Tripod. We're, uh, we're letting. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's good. There is a. Uh, I got. I got to wind Pete up a little bit. The uh, the kids who are really good on that zoom can zoom and focus at the same time. It takes two hands and a delicate touch, but it is doable. <laughs> well, to begin with, I'm a lefty, so oh, and this is in my right hand. You're really going to be challenged. <laughs> <laughs> Dan, can we keep moving? Uh, Atlanta is moving all the time, mate. Atlanta is moving all the time. Okay, you can go wide. Go on wide. Looks like Atlanta I think it's so cool settling. how those fish anchor down. Yeah, I do. Just training the back row, so just because the ROV stops doesn't mean the ship and Atalanta have stopped. And uh, we're kind of uh, being conservative here on the next ship move. We're letting Atalanta swing hey. in, so we don't uh, get um, aggressive and and uh, wind up with Atalanta in the cliff. Really? Not uh, pinging. You can't uh, soft reboot. You've already tried that. Roger. Press too many buttons. There is a there is a, a uh, web-based reboot command there in your in your cheat sheet. I'm just going to uh, bring Herc to the south a little bit there, and I'm going to ask Atalanta to bring your heading to um, 120, please. Uh, we're just squaring up on the wall, kids, for in the back row, and I'm going to yep, yep. try to figure out what the uh, final vessel move is to uh, put us on the wall with a nice offset with Atalanta. Not too close, not too far away. So what we're doing for NAV and for everyone else, if you see the uh, red wall of death there, that's so as you twist your heading, maybe another uh, one more click to the right, 10 degrees to the right. And we'll wait for the sweep to come around. So that squares, that puts Atalanta's heading perpendicular to the, to the wall. And then I'm just going to uh, scoot to the right. So I'm out. Oh, yeah, sorry. One click to the left. I didn't let it sweep. Go back to your uh, 120, that looks good. I can actually reverse here. I don't have to wait for the full sweep. Delta's fine. I'm, I'm also watching your altitude. I'm stretched out, so we're good there. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm like. Give me uh, 10 degrees left. I came too far. Right it. Um, another ten degrees left. Appeals to my sense of symmetry close enough for now. 
So that gives us kind of uh, gives everybody in the room, including me and the navigator and you should be watching that. Um, Atlantis perpendicular to the wall and it's 40 meters away and then you can see Herc there in front of it about 30 there meters. It is. And you can see the shadow of the wall coming up there. Uh, sorry, back row. I'll be a little slow and cautious. Uh, just coming up to it here until I see yeah, what yeah. we got here. So, all good. I'm gonna stretch, uh, stretch Hercules out a little, and you know, see. It looks pretty uh, vertical there, based on the red return. But all I have is a red return and a sonar. Ten meters for me. Come on. Ten, yeah, ten meters at twenty meters a minute. This is amazing. And just so you know, Dion, I'm full wide open on Iris. Yeah, I, I noticed that. I was going to ask you to is adjust it, but I got sidetracked by... I want to make sure my... Uh, Seeking here is doing what it's supposed to do because I rely on it pretty heavily. Copy that. When we're on the cliff, you can you can close it down a little bit. Yeah, for now we're stretched out pretty so I'm 30 meters away from you and. Um, you can tell I use this heavily for my horizontal distance. Uh, I look at that screen probably as often as I look at the rest of them. And so, yeah, the sweet spot is uh, 20 meters away. So when I'm 30, I'm stretched out. So you have to be a little lower to give me the leash. And conversely, if I'm a little closer, if I'm like 10 meters away, you're going to want to be a little higher. Sweet spot is 20, 20 out, 20 up, and that gives us our nice little lazy yes in the tether. But that changes all the time, <laughs> and I, I change it a little more, maybe aggressively than. Uh, depends on what we're doing. If we're transiting along, I'll keep it all in the box. If we're, you know, off to smell the flowers, all. And then at the moment, I'm stretched out just to. Um, because we're going to make a final move here, because I believe we're going to go up the wall, right? I kind of want to go a little bit up, but also along. Because um, kind of down here is where we can set it. Oh, yeah, I, I see, I see, I, I see. I agree. To the south?